When it comes to buying a property in France, one thing which is on a lot of people's minds is how can I get a visa? So stay tuned and I'll run you through the basics. The thing is, there's quite a few videos out there already, but to be honest, they make it sound so complicated, most people just give up when they hear them. Uh, the thing is, they're trying to answer all cases in one video. So I thought I saw a video giving you just the basics, the basic rundown, and then after that, that needs to be adapted to everyone's particular case story. So here we go for getting the visa, the basics. But stay around to the end because a bit of a surprise at the end. First off, well, you're going to need somewhere to stay and for about 12 months. Unfortunately, you can't just crash on a French sofa. It has to be somewhere that you can actually justify is yours. So either a rental agreement or ownership. Secondly, and quite an important part of the, the actual setup, is health insurance. This is actually a specific health insurance. It's not your travel insurance, not your holiday insurance. It is standard health insurance. There are specialised companies in France dealing with this. The cost of which depends on your age. Basically, the older you are, the more expensive it is. To give you an idea, if you're a 20 year old and moving over here, your health insurance for the year will cost you probably less than a thousand euros. But on the other hand, if you're over 80 and moving over here, it'll probably cost you over 5,000 euros per year. The third factor to take into account is, well, money. Basically, the French government don't want you to be a burden on the state. So it's down to you to justify to them that you have enough income to actually sustain yourselves. It doesn't necessarily have to be salary, so to speak. It can be a rental coming in from property you have in, in the UK or wherever. It can also be you know, interest coming from investments. It can be pensions, whatever. Well, as long as it's legal, anyhow. There is a figure of 1,330 euros flying around the net, which corresponds pretty well to the minimum salary here in France. But it's not just a case of multiplying that by the number of people in your family unit. The amount per capita actually decreases the more you are. Also, the French government will take into account when assessing your request, whether you're renting a property, whether you're buying a property, whether you've got a loan to buy that property, or whether it's a cash deal, they also actually take into account where you are living. Because obviously, if you're moving to the actual back end of the La Cruz countryside, or whether you're actually staying in the heart of Paris, the cost of living will not be the same. So we can't actually give an exact figure per person. But roughly speaking, if you count 1,330 for the first person, add on about, I don't know, 50 to 60% for the second. But like I said, it's just a rule of thumb guide. So there you have it. Getting the visa, the basics. But wait a moment, didn't I say wait till the end? Well, the Senate, which I suppose you can compare to the House of Lords, has actually just accepted a proposition of law which is there basically to facilitate the acquisition of visas for any British people having second homes in France whether now or in the future. Don't get too excited though, because although the Senate has accepted it, it still needs to be accepted by Parliament. Basically what happens there, Parliament can either say yay or nay, or with modifications. And that will usually take a few months to actually happen. But as soon as I have any more information on that, I'll bring you up to speed. And that sounds like a very good reason to click that old like, subscribe and bell buttons just down here. See you around.